In this video we are going to learn about the fundamental elements of puberty. Puberty is the age in postnatal life when gonads produce gametes and sex hormones in sufficient quantities to enable an animal to reproduce. It is not a sudden event but a gradual maturation process of the endocrine and reproductive systems, allowing the animal to reproduce successfully. The hypothalamus plays a vital role in the regulation of the onset of puberty. The onset of puberty depends on many aspects like age, species, genotype, body weight, growth rate, and energy status. Before we proceed to the subject of puberty, let us understand there are fundamental differences in the hypothalamus of both male and female. The hypothalamus is inherently female. Testosterone defeminizes the hypothalamus during embryogenesis and eliminates the gonadotropin-releasing hormone surge center in the male. During prenatal development in the male, testosterone from the fetal testis defeminizes the brain. The female fetus has no testis to produce testosterone, so it develops a gonadotropin-releasing hormone surge center in the hypothalamus. For testosterone to defeminize the hypothalamus, it must first be converted to estradiol. Fetal ovaries produce estradiol, and there is a logical question that is frequently asked, why does not the female hypothalamus become defeminized? The answer is that fetal estradiol in the female cannot cross the blood-brain barrier and access the hypothalamus. Alpha fetoprotein binds estradiol and prevents it from crossing the blood-brain barrier. Therefore, estradiol cannot affect the hypothalamus. Alpha fetoprotein is a glycoprotein synthesized by the embryonic yolk sac and later the fetal liver, that serves as a fetal blood osmotic regulator and a carrier of fatty acids. In the male, testosterone freely enters the brain because alpha fetoprotein does not bind it. Testosterone is aromatized into estradiol and the male brain is defeminized. Therefore, a gonadotropin-releasing hormone surge center does not develop. The female hypothalamus contains a surge center and tonic center, while the male hypothalamus does not appear to have a surge center. The fundamental difference in the endocrine profiles of the postpubertal male and female is that luteinizing hormone or LH does not surge in the male, but maintains a relatively consistent day in and day out episodic pattern of secretion. The requirement for pubertal onset is the secretion of gonadotropin-releasing hormone at the appropriate frequency and quantities to stimulate gonadotropin release by the anterior pituitary lobe. Gonadotropins will promote gametogenesis, steroidogenesis and the development of reproductive tissues. The number of neurons that secrete gonadotropin-releasing hormone their morphology and their distribution within the hypothalamus are established well before pubertal onset. However, their degree of function increases as puberty begins. The function of these neurons may be influenced by plain nutrition, exposure to certain environmental or social cues, and the genetics of the individual. Generally, Puberty can be defined in both the male and female as the ability to accomplish reproduction successfully. Puberty should be considered as a process not a single event. The term puberty originated from Latin word pubsir which means to be covered with hair. This definition applies to the development of hair in the pubic area, armpits and legs in women and men. Also, the development of beard in men is an indicator of pubescence. This obviously does not apply to other animals. The onset of puberty has many definitions in females. Several criteria can be used to define puberty in the female. First is the age at first estrus or heat. This is the age that a female becomes sexually sensorial and plays her first estrus. The age at first estrus is somewhat easy to determine because females exhibit outward behavioral signals of sexual receptivity, especially in the male presence. The first ovulation normally is not accompanied by behavioral estrus in heifers and ewes. This has been termed silent ovulation. Thus, 
The age at first estrus may not reflect the accurate acquisition of puberty. Age at first ovulation is the stage when the first ovulation occurs. Manual or visual validation is required to determine this stage. This requires a frequent observations of the ovary to determine exactly when ovulation occurred. Although the age at ovulation is a good criterion of puberty, it is difficult to determine. Lastly, the age at which a female can support pregnancy without deleterious effects. This definition is most applicable from a practical standpoint to all domestic animals and humans. The goal for food producing species is to generate the highest possible number of offspring in the shortest time interval without compromising the dam's or neonate's well-being. Definitions of onset puberty in males the onset of puberty in the male can be identified in several ways. First is the age when behavioral traits are expressed. Males of most species develop reproductive behavioral traits such as mounting and erection well before they acquire the capability to ejaculate and produce spermatozoa. These behavioral traits are rather easy to determine since mounting behavior and erection of the penis can be observed readily. Second is the age at first ejaculation. The process of ejaculation is quite complicated and requires closely coordinated development of nerves, specific muscles, and secretion of seminal fluids from the accessory sex glands. When the development of all these components emerges, ejaculation takes place. The ability to ejaculate substantially precedes producing sufficient spermatozoa to achieve fertilization. Third is the age when spermatozoa first appear in the ejaculate. The male develops the ability to produce seminal fluid and ejaculate before spermatozoa can be ejaculated. To specify precisely when the first spermatozoa are available, one must collect ejaculates at least once per week. After behavioral characteristics have been developed and the male is willing to mount a receptive female or surrogate female, frequent seminal collections can be made. Fourth is the age when spermatozoa first appear in the urine. Most spermatozoa delivered by the testes are lost in the urine during periods of sexual rest. The existence of spermatozoa in the urine indicates that spermatogenesis is surfacing. Systematic urine collection is complex in large domestic animals and requires special equipment. Therefore, this method for estimating pubertal onset has limitations. Lastly is the age when the ejaculate contains a threshold number of spermatozoa. Even though an ejaculate may contain spermatozoa, there may be insufficient numbers to accomplish optimum fertilization. Therefore, the presence of a minimum number of spermatozoa is required. This diagram shows the changes in hypothalamic secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone before and after puberty. Before puberty in the female and male GnRH, neurons in the tonic center and surge center of the hypothalamus release low amplitude and low frequency pulses of GnRH. Meanwhile, after puberty in the female, the tonic center controls basal levels of GnRH, but they are higher than in the pubertal female because the pulse frequency increases. The surge center controls the preovulatory surge of GER. However, the male does not develop a surge center. On the other hand, this diagram shows the luteinizing hormone frequency before and after puberty. Frequency of LH pulses as a reflection of GnRH pulses in heifers prior to the onset of puberty. The substantial time required at approximately two months shaded area for pulse frequency to become high enough for puberty to be achieved. The variation in LH. Pulse frequency after puberty reflects the changes occurring during the estrus cycle. The first figure shows the average ages of puberty in both sexes of various species, while the other figure shows the influence of breed on age at puberty of domestic animals. The breed of the animal has an important role on the age at which puberty is attained in female and male. Bos indicus breeds may not reach puberty until 24 months of age. A certain degree of fatness is required for the onset of puberty in the female. The priority of the neonate is to use energy to maintain vital physiologic functions. Therefore, non-essential processes such as reproduction are of low importance. 
As the neonate starts to grow, energy consumption increases, its body mass becomes more prominent, and the relative surface area of the body decreases. This allows a shift in metabolic expenditure so that non-vital physiological functions begin to develop. As this shift occurs, the overall metabolic rate decreases, and more internal energy becomes available for non-vital functions. This excess internal energy can be converted into fat stores, and young animals begin to place priority on reproduction, and the onset of puberty begins. It should be highlighted that fatness alone does not stimulate the onset of puberty. Females can be obese at a very young age and not be pubertal. Both body maturation and the amount of body fat are essential in regulating the age of pubertal onset. Gonadotropin releasing hormone neurons detect moment-to-moment -moment changes in blood glucose and fatty acids. Evidence indicates that the initiation of high-frequency GER pulses is under the impact of glucose and free fatty acid levels in the blood. For example, when female hamsters were treated concurrently with inhibitors of fatty acid methylpalmicorate and glucose oxidation 2 deoxyglucoses to DG, their estrous cycles were disrupted. The rationale for using glucose and fatty acid oxidation inhibitors was that these inhibitors reduce available internal energy. When these metabolic inhibitors were injected into overectomized prepubertal ewes, pulsatile luteinizing hormone secretion was immediately suppressed. On the other hand, fatness for puberty in male is not well understood. Leptin is a hormonal peptide discovered in 1994 and produced by adipocytes or fat cells. The amount of leptin in the blood is directly connected to the amount of fat in the body. The receptors to leptin are located in the liver, kidney, heart, skeletal muscles, and pancreas. The discovery that leptin receptors are also present in the anterior lobe of the pituitary and hypothalamus has sparked notable interest in the prospect that leptin might play an essential role in mediating the onset of puberty in mammals. Leptin may be an important signal that notifies GER neurons that nutritional status is adequate because a threshold degree of fatness has been achieved. Environmental and social conditions impact the onset of puberty in the female. There are external factors that have an important influence on the onset of puberty. These factors include the season of birth and social cues such as the presence of males or the size of the social group in which females are housed. In general, sensory neurons of the optic and olfactory systems perceive environmental information that influences pubertal onset. Season of birth and photoperiod are essential modulators of pubertal onset. The month of birth influences the age of puberty, particularly in seasonal breeders, provided no artificial illumination alters natural photoperiod cues. Sheep are an excellent example because they are seasonal breeders that begin their estrus cycles in response to short day lengths. Social cues alter the onset of puberty. Social cues greatly impact the onset of puberty in many mammalian species. Females reaching puberty in the presence of males have a more excellent opportunity to become pregnant. However, Pubertal onset cannot be accelerated in animals without the appropriate metabolic body size to trigger hypothalamic responsiveness to estradiol. Specific social cues inhibit the onset of puberty. Small groups of gilts housed together have delayed the onset of puberty. For example, gilts housed in small groups have delayed puberty compared to gilts housed in groups of 10 or more. These females will penetrate puberty at the expected time of 28 weeks. Nevertheless, if the group size is reduced to only two or three gilts, they will enter puberty at a later time than their counterparts housed in larger groups. Also, the presence of males hastens the onset of puberty. Gilts that are housed in small groups and exposed to a boar will enter puberty at an earlier age than either of their large or small grouped counterparts that are not exposed to a boar. The important point is that the male presence, either in visual contact with females or indirect physical contact with them, will hasten puberty and guilts.